Man, oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I said it the entire time, man. The RFAs, they're always doing well with the RFAs, the Demcos, the Berchies, the Bessers, the Horvats. They're fine. But the UFAs, these guys are handled so poorly. And with the Vancouver Canucks now, with Tanner Pearson coming back for three years at 3.25 each, you gotta ask yourself, what's going on here? The Vancouver Canucks have legitimately re-signed Tanner Pearson before Patterson and before Hughes. They're in a position where they let Tyler Toffoli, who's got 19 goals and 30 points in 33 games played, walk at $4.25 million. Now they re-sign Tanner Pearson, who has 11 points in 33 games north of $3 million for three years. It's the two-year plan here with Jim Benning, right? Oh, we're gonna be competitive in two years. We're gonna be a good team then. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at what we have now and see how can these help us out in the future? Oh, Tanner Pearson, is he going to help us out in two years? Yep. Look at what he's doing right now. He's got 11 points in 33 games played this season. A huge decline from what he had last year. And he's in a spot where, you know, he's not really looking to get any better in the next few years. What would be the best move to help us out in two years with Tanner Pearson? Trade him away for picks? Trade him away for guys that we can use that are U22 and help us out in two years? Or re-sign him to when he's going to be 31 years old and probably declining? What is this? Is this the day-by-day -day plan we're going about here? Because it sure as heck seems like it. The Vancouver Canucks have legitimately come out here and done... What I believe is the wrong move, I mean, look, there's even trade protection here. There's a full no trade clause in year one, a modified NTC with seven teams in year two, and no protection whatsoever in year number three. But with the way things are going down, you are really, really betting on Tanner Pearson to consistently stay as a top six capable forward with this signing. And you're going out there expecting him to be a guy who can go out there as probably a top nine player in the next few seasons because you're gonna have Hoaglander here, you're gonna have Bud Colson here, your top six is gonna be Pedersen, Miller, Besser, if you re-sign Pedersen that is, Horvat, Pod Colson, Hoaglander. You're not gonna get Hoaglander or Pod Colson onto this lineup to play them on your third or fourth line. You're gonna have to get one of those guys moving down into that spot and Tanner Pearson is by default gonna be that. Do you want to be paying 3.25 million dollars a season in for Tanner Pearson, who was on the decline. Yes, he had 20 goals last year, but is he going to be able to produce the same way after putting up 11 points in 33 games this season, still in a top six role, and when you push him down the lineup when Hoglander and Pod Colson are here full time? This is a move where you're legitimately saying, yeah, this is like Sutter 2. This is like Dorsett and Spiza 2. You're giving money out to a guy who is not really in a position who in the long term is going to deserve that. So, ah, man, man, Tyler Toffoli, bro, Tyler Toffoli, it just always goes back to Toffoli, doesn't it? It always goes back to that guy who's going out there as almost a point per game player, because Tanner Pearson is not that, and Tanner Pearson is out there with a contract that is close. In fact, just go ahead, re-sign Sutter, re-sign Edler, do all the crazy stuff as well, because we know what's coming. Talk to me in the comments if you think I've enjoyed this episode of Ash Wilson, the A9, and bye.